This is going to be the first set of instructions for our two color watercolor. And in it, we're going to take a step by step approach in terms of what the technical direction you want to have in doing something like this. In other words, in every painting that you'll ever do, there are a certain number of steps that you have to take. And in watercolor, you can either take these steps and learn them uh, by someone showing you, which I think is a lot easier, or you can learn them by trial and error, which uh, is really a very uh, frustrating and uh, difficult experience. So what we're going to do is we're going to take you through this step by step and, uh, and explain uh, the basic things on as far as what we're doing and how to do it. So as we go through the first step of the two color watercolor, the first thing we want to do is learn how to apply masking tape. So let's just uh, move the particular sample that we have here. This is a photograph of the watercolor that you get in your packet. Let's move this over and I'll show you how to do the taping at this time. Now the way that we're going to be approaching the watercolor, first of all, uh, even the, the sample page that I'm using here is 140 pound watercolor paper. pound weight such as you're using because it allows you to wet everything down a lot more and the paper does not buckle. Okay now what we want to do is put some masking tape around the edges and the first part we're going to do is going to be the sky up here. Okay this is what we're doing and uh, so in order to do the sky and have the edges around the barn and uh, in this area here, nice and crisp, the first thing we're going to do is apply masking tape. Now the particular masking tape that I use is called Scotch 232, it's the number 232 tape. And I always try to apply it where I cut it as least as, least as possible. Now it always concerns a lot of people uh, when you put something like this on it, on it and cut it with an X-Acto knife, but what I'd like to point out to you is the fact that um, this paper has a sizing in it. It's very effective uh, in, in the sense that you can uh, tape it and uh, cut it. And because of the sizing, even though this is made out of 100% cotton fabric, uh, it still will not affect the paper. And that's why I stress always using a good quality watercolor paper. Now notice how I'm putting this up against the edges Okay, and then I'm, I'm coming back with it like this and trying to use the edges as much as possible. Okay, and we'll come across like this and then put some on a horizon line. Now you notice how we did this. I can't stress enough to you also the importance of this particular type of tape. If you go buy it at Kmart or something, it, it will bleed on you. Now notice how, um, how I taped it along the horizon around the borders and across here. And uh, that's the first process that you want to do. Now notice also I started with a very clear drawing so I knew exactly what I would be doing. And that's our first step and let's take a moment now and let you go ahead and put your masking tape on it. Okay, now as we uh, approach the watercolor part of it, I want to just take the palette out and show you the two colors that we're using are the ultramarine blue and the burnt umber. Now in our one color watercolor we use the burnt umber which is a warm color and uh, the uh, the complementary to that is using an ultramarine blue which is a cooler color. Now the first thing we want to do and that's our two colors in here so you can make a note of that it's, in, it's already written in your instructions. Now the first thing we want to do it's taped Make sure we press the tape down around the edges and that everything is put on there correctly. Okay, now, the next thing we're going to do is take a large brush 
and we're going to wet the paper down very thoroughly. Now, remember, you can never wet the paper too much. The biggest problem people, most people have is they wet it, they don't put enough, uh, they, they wet it too little, they just don't put enough water on it. So let's uh, begin by wetting this down very thoroughly. Okay, now, I'll just move this over here because I think we can watch it on the palette. We're going to take the ultramarine blue, which you won't see this very good on the television, but the ultramarine blue is going to be a little bit bright by itself. So we'll take a little bit of the umber, just enough to tone it down and take some of the harshness out of it. And it gives it a little bit more of a grayish effect, but it still keeps the pretty blue. Now we'll mix this amount of color, okay? And as you notice on our scene, we have a lighter color across the back of it. Then we have a more of a middle tone and then a solid umber darker color in the background. So with the paper completely wet now, let's take the ultramarine blue, now you might want to use the bigger brush to apply this. Now the first thing, I put this on here a little bit darkly. It's not a problem because if we have to, we'll just move this down like this and bring it across and you can really just paint this part of it like you paint the side of a house. Now again, this isn't going to show up a whole lot and that's just what we want, just enough to barely tint it. We mix a little bit more of the pigment. Now that's a little bit dark again. So after you get it on there pretty well, just take your brush and come across like this and smooth it all out. Okay, that's our first wash, and it's going to dry a little bit lighter than this. This is our background color. All right, the second wash, we want to take the umber with the blue, just a tiny bit less water. We want to come across this upper area. You know, you can see this on your photograph when you look at your set. I don't have quite enough of the umber. What the umber does is it grays it down. So we'll put a little bit more, and I'm trying to show kind of a foggy line in the distance here. So we'll do that and bring it down a little bit more. And we'll actually put an area across this section and across this section here. A lot of people wonder about, about where this barn came from. And this is actually a barn that used to be located on a friend of mine, Dr. Zeke Dakota's place uh, next door to him in Lafayette, Louisiana. And I took a picture and sketched it about 20 years ago, and a lot of students wonder where it originated. It was later torn down, and the cypress was used by someone to build another home. Okay, now that's our second layer. Now notice all of this is being done wet on wet. We did the lighter blue, then we did the middle tone blue, now we're going to take the pure umber and just come inside of here and move it around. And that's a little bit darker than I want it, so I'll just clean my brush here and lift it up a little bit. And we'll just blend it out. Now the one unique thing that you're going to notice about this is that it will have a tendency, because the blue and the brown are chemically different, they'll have a tendency to separate. So if you'll watch it, you'll see that the blue and the brown up at the top, particularly depending on the conditions of the wetness and the amount of pigment, but many times they'll just separate and start running in each direction. Now we'll come over to this side. Likewise, put the umbrella along the base of it. You can use your reference picture to help you see this a little bit more clearly. And notice I just go across the tree and everything. Work a little bit of that up into it. But primarily look at your photograph and even at your painting, you might see some of these colors separating. 
It makes an interesting effect, and what actually happens is that some of it goes into the pores of the paper, and other parts of it sit on top of it. Okay, and that's the completion of the first part of our background sky. Now we're going to allow this to dry, and when it's totally dry, we'll pick up the tape, and you'll see that on the next demonstration. It'll leave nice, sharp, white edges. Okay, we'll begin the next portion of our illustration here, uh, our demonstration of this two-color watercolor by looking at it once more with the tape on it. Now, this is a little lesson that will help you in removing the tape. It may not seem like it's a lot, but you want to be careful when you're pulling your tape up is to make sure you pull it away from your painting in the sense that you don't dig the knife into it or if you have cut on it, just be sure that you don't lift up a lot of the watercolor paper. That's what will actually happen sometime if you're not real careful. So like where this tip right here could possibly create a problem, I just take my time. And we'll just pull all of it up like this. Now we'll take a regular sketch pencil and since we're now going to be moving down to the uh, just the building alone, let's put on our remote control. Y'all never saw a remote control like this one before. And we'll just move on where we can see the entire building a lot more clearly. Now, what we want to do at this time is sketch in the roof. Now you should already have this sketched in pretty well on your uh, painting. And the rest of it's going to be done very flatly. Okay, we're going to take this and we're going to mix the blue and the brown. Now in the shadows, you always want to have a little bit more blue in the lighter areas, you want to have a little bit more brown. The blue is a cooler color, which you'll have in shadows, and the brown is a warmer color, which uh, you'll tend to have in the light areas. So we'll get, get it to be kind of a brayish, a brownish gray, and then we'll just come down and put a flat wash over it like this. We'll go straight across. And notice how I'm using that flat brush. And you'll learn, it's like a sign painter. Most of you have been accustomed to just using very tiny brushes. And it's mainly because you're a little insecure and afraid to make a mistake and a little unsure of yourself. And what we want to really teach you in this lesson is that in the, the initial washes, you want to use the largest brush possible to cover your flat washes. And then as you progressively put in more detail, you just add more and more detail to that. And we'll put a little area breaking it up at the bottom. Now, you, you're gonna have a problem with this initially, getting it to come out uh, as uh, smoothly as I do, but that's not a problem, and just work it the best way you can. Now, on the roof by itself, just take a light tone of the umber and you'll notice there are areas on the roof you can look at your photograph and see where I have some of the tin area is completely covered and then other sections are left white so what we're going to do is again notice how I'm using a flat brush I might skip one area here Maybe just put this in like this. I'll go
go to my next section. Bring this on down. And this entire back section here is going to be pretty well covered. So we'll just do this. Now likewise, after we lay that in there flatly, let me move my paper over just a little bit here. We want to come in around the base of the building. I notice I'm still using that flat half inch brush. I'm going to come in at the base of this building and I'm going to put a horizontal movement. Now notice and remember the rule, whenever you have a vertical, always have a horizontal going across to settle it. Now notice in this case how I'm uh, leaving some of the white areas in front of the building. That works out very fine. Okay, now after this point, we'll just layer in our basic washes on the building. Let's take our camera back up again. And then the final part we're going to do is again just take a flat wash. And go across like this. Now as you're going across, you may want to stop and just soften some of these edges. Because what we're going to do is we're going to just drag this up very lightly. Now we'll step back down, continue across again. And remember, you want to put this on very lightly. And this is a bank on this particular, uh, by this bayou or creek, whatever you want it to be. But notice as I come up with my horizontal lines, even though this is at an angle, I'm going to come up and make it get lighter as it goes into the distance. But notice how I'm dragging all of my lines across to match the horizon. Later, I'll make some of the, the darker areas curve against that. And likewise, I'll just pull it up around this side over here and just fill in this area right here. Okay, now, I believe that's a good stopping point. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, we're going to go to the next stage of our demonstration here again and let's just drop this down a little closer to the building one more time since that's primarily where we're going to be working at. Okay, now if you'll notice on your photograph we have this area on the side of the building that's fairly dark and it has some white areas that are highlighted in it. Now the way this was done is after I painted the dark in I came back and I scraped these highlight areas out. Now what will surprise you is the fact that I'm going to continue to use this flat brush. Now notice how, but again, we're not doing enough detail to where you need to go to anything different. So we're just going to come down right here, get almost solid pigment. Now many of you were wondering, but were afraid to ask, what did you do with the post? Well we're going to uh, bring the post back out again simply by the way we put the darks next to it. So we'll come down so far with the darks on the shadow area, dry your brush off, it's a little bit too dry, and then we're just going to drag all of this down lightly. Now, needless to say, it's not going to be as easy for you initially to get the hang of this, but 
you just have to jump in there and this is what these exercises are designed to do to just force you to try it now watch how our post begins to come out now again we'll do this very darkly And then after you get to a certain point, moisten your brush just a little bit and drag this base area down. Now here's the key. Everybody has a lot of trouble with the scraping. Well, I know from looking at this right now that the painting is too wet. It's got a high gloss look to it. Let's see if I, you probably will never see this on the screen, but uh, it's got a high gloss to it. Now, what you want to do is allow it to start getting somewhat of a matte finish in the drying process. You can see it's still moist, but it has a matte look to it. That's the time that you want to come in and put your scraping. So we'll go just a little bit further. Bring this down a certain amount. Look how those posts jump out at you. Then you dry your brush off again. bring this down like this okay now I can look at this this first part and see it's still relatively wet and sometimes your humidity will govern this now when I start to scrape it nothing happens happens and I wouldn't blow dry it I'd just be a little bit patient with it and uh, as it starts to soften and get more of a matte finish to it you'll know when it's time to do it so we'll wait here just a moment Now let's go back and try it again now. You can see it lifting out pretty well. It may run a little bit, which is okay. But this is a medium where you really have to learn to be very patient. And now, um, notice how I'm tilting that blade over quite a bit. That's why we use this particular X-Acto blade. If you use a blade that's not this uh, it has this type of an edge on it. If the edge is too sharp, it just won't scrape it. Okay, that's how we put that part of it in it. Now, we'll go one step further in this stage, or perhaps a couple of steps, and we'll turn it sideways. And we're going to do our eave now. Now we'll go to our number eight brush which is the one that we're using here. It's around. I think you can see that fairly well. And we'll just take, again, a burn over to ultramarine blue. And we'll do this rather, rather darkly. And we're going to come right up the side of it and put our Eve in. We'll come up like this. We'll bring it down like this. And then this is actually the side of our building coming off this edge right here. Now this is almost solid pigment, and so it isn't completely dark. After we bring it down to this point right here, let's just soften this a little bit. and allow a little bit of reflected light. Everybody remembers what that reflected light is. We'll let that come out. Now, you don't see a deep shadow like this on the side of a building. So what we're going to do is just take our brush and we're going to just gently soften that eave. Now, a lot of people don't like this comment. They think I'm being funny or trying to be when I say it. But we have a name for this at the Baton Rouge Fine Arts Academy. And that is you put your eave in there very darkly. And then you soften that edge and drop it down. And we call that eavesdropping. Nobody laughed now. Okay, now since the front of this is a little bit darker than what we've got, we'll just continue 
to drop this down. Now notice how I'm softening this edge with a little water here. And just drop it down like this. Okay, now that'll be a good conclusion for our next stage. As we go to the next part of the front of this building, I want you to notice how some of the lines on the boards uh, are missing. So what we've got is actually a double door in the front of this. So even though it may be a little bit difficult to see it, I would at least like to go back in and put some of my basic lines in. Now if you'll look at your line drawing that you originally did, I could almost do it by memory, but if you'll look at your original line drawing, you'll see that uh, that's the one you transferred from that the, uh, the what the lines look like. Now if you lose your lines, you, you really have to go back in there and put them back in again. Okay, now we're going to take a little bit of the burnt umber and the ultramarine blue. Now, by the way, as we use the burnt umber and ultramarine blue, I might mention that it's a color that uh, I like very much in a lot of things that I do, but the most important part of it is it's, it's the color that will give you all the blacks and all the grays. And I would much rather mix my blacks and grays uh, rather than using gray, because you'll have gray with color. All right. Now, we're going to come in and just put some fine lines. I have, just use either a number six or a number four brush. And I think this is pretty clear. We're just coming down. This will be the door. Now notice I put a flat wash on in several layers on the front of the building. And notice when I drag the brush, I'm not trying to make perfect lines. I have the lines drawn, but I'm taking the artistic liberty even to lose them and find them again, and so forth. Okay, we'll just drag it all down like that. Now, let's come up at the top. Now, these are going to be the wider, uh, probably 12-inch boards that we used uh, originally. And so notice how we're going to go and put these tail, uh, details in first. And again, I'm, I'm making sure that they're straight and that they go with a certain flow, but I'm not trying to make them all that perfect. Okay, now the unique thing about, uh, about doing this is that we can come back in after we have the boards drawn and we can actually make, some of, make the boards individually by dry brushing certain colors over them. So in this case, I'm dry brushing a little burn umber over here. I can mix it put some of the darker colors, likewise, coming up from the bottom, doing the same thing, and, and you can just do a lot of things like this to create your different textures and so forth on here. So let's just go back and we'll do it a board at a time. And this is really going to be the basis of what you'll do on boards as long as you do them. Uh, the only thing a little bit later, you will come in and uh, use different colors. Now I'll skip it around. I think the dry brush is showing up very well. And then some of it I'll just leave completely light as it goes up. Okay, now while I'm allowing that to dry, now we don't want to lose the uh, entire thing, but if you look at your picture, again, you're going to see a lot of dry brush. So what we're going to do is just come in and drag this brush across here. And more or less, uh, again, create a little bit more of the texture. But watch, 
you don't do like so many people do, and that is to make this way, way too dark. Now, if it's a little dark, I'll dry my brush off or whatever. But now you see the nice dry brush coming through. Okay, we'll come and do the same thing over here. Now, you don't need to overdo this, and it doesn't have to be on every board. But it is a very innovative effect and uh, looks very good. Now, I've allowed this to dry, and I'm going to come back right in the middle, and I'm going to put a dark line here like as if our door is open. And then I'm going to put another line across the top like as if it's going back quite a bit. Many times people ask me, you know, what happened on that door, and, and I just mentioned it. It's the door is just open. All right. Now I'll also come in, and I'll darken some of this a little bit more. And notice how that board begins to recede a little bit, and the other one stands out. Now, we've got some... Uh, hinges that the door would swing on, so we'll put them on there. And then lastly, I like to come in at the end sometimes and I'll get my, blush, uh, my brush flowing correctly and just put a little bit of line work in. That's, this paint's a little bit hard. To... Okay, now there we go. Now you can't see this too well in here, but you can see it on the painting. Put some of those peckerwood holes on there. My nose but that is even come down here and look at how all that does is in a very nice and very interesting way it antiques it okay now that blends it all in and I think that's a good stopping point <clears throat> now as we're looking at this portion of it let's slide this over now and uh, let's just do this portion on the roof. Now, I think this is going to be somewhat of an education for you. Again, uh, because of the brush that I'm going to use and so forth. But I'll give you some little tips on watercolor. Now, again, your lines might get lost a little bit when you wet them like that. So we're just going to come back in and uh, put those lines back in correctly. All right, now remember, we went over the roof with plain burn umber. Okay, I'm going to just start the same thing again. Now mixing the paint and so forth, getting it just right. Now, any good watercolor book is going to tell you that a professional watercolor artist will always use the largest brush possible and then go to a smaller brush. Now we're all very insecure and needless to say, we all want to use the uh, smallest brush possible to start with. Well, in this case, let's use this. Now, if you feel uncomfortable, go ahead and use your number eight or something like that. Now, notice I'm going to create the pattern, but I'm keeping these nice, sharp edges. I'm using this brush very much like a sign painter would use it. I'm just keeping it flat and getting these nice, sharp edges. Okay, I'll come over here, and I think this whole thing is uh, covered here. Every now and then I might get a little dry brush on it. That's fine. Then I'll come back down here, and I'll just hit this one again. Put a little dry brush on it. Now, you'll notice this whole section back here is pretty dark, except there's one area where the roof comes in, and it's a little bit lighter. And we'll just follow that pattern. Now, you just, the main thing you don't want to do as, as you're doing this is don't create a monotonous pattern. But we'll come down just a little bit, not leave a, look, another little bit of a, a light area there. Now, I think that really is going to be pretty close for what I want on the roof right there. Now, I'm going to go back, and in this case, I would use a number six or a number eight brush, whichever is more convenient for you, or you may even want to use a number four. Now, I'll get a little bit looser with it, while that's drying, there's a real dark ledge up under here. So I'm going to connect that, connect that. And notice how, as I wiggle that line a little bit, it's actually giving me the effect of the corrugation. Now I'm going to come back up here, and I'll just antique the side of this a little, come up like this. And then what's very important is to put some line work in. But notice... When I put the line work, I'm going to drag it, I'm going to lose it. Straight lines are boring. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to come across, drag it, create a lot of lost and found, and do that. Okay, I'll come down, do this a little. I might want to sharpen some of these edges like this. It has a cap on it. So if you wanted to come in and do this, that's fine. Put your little line across the top. Okay, now occasionally I came in with a little line work on the roof, as you can see. Not a lot, but every now and then. And uh, you can carry that to whatever extreme you wish to carry it. And then last of all, I, would, I took a little bit of the, uh, the darker tone and color and uh, just antique. This is just part of the plain burn umber and antique the roof a little bit like this. Okay, and that pretty well takes care of the colors on our roof. Now, in, and uh, this might be a good stop point uh, for you to stop right now and go ahead and do your roof. Now I'm going ahead to the next section because it's just going to take a couple of minutes and finish this part of it off. Now notice as I get to the back of the barn here, I'm just going to draw, remember our pencil sketching, pencil broadsides? Look how I did that with just almost one stroke. Switch it on the other side and I'll do the same thing again. Now you don't have to worry about coming out looking exactly like this one or that one. If I have areas that I can do this in, there was a support underneath there that would generally look like that, that's what I would put on there. Okay, likewise, I'll come back and uh, where this might be a little thick now, I'll just uh, make it slightly smaller, like that. And then last of all, with a larger round brush, eight, six, whatever you feel comfortable with, I'd come back in and I would really make my darks against the building quite seriously. So we'll put the darker section in like this and notice how I'm just going for a particular effect. And uh, at this point, I think it's good to be a little bit loose. Now, the main thing that these docks are going to do, uh, okay, that's that one side of it there. Excuse me, that wasn't on the screen. I've got this close up because I think you can see it very well. And we'll just come along this other side and we'll do the same thing. Okay, then lastly, let's take a little bit of plain burn umber and we'll come across the front of it. In fact, we might even want to move the, uh, the screen up just a tiny bit. And capture the, uh, let's not go any further because I don't want you to miss this detail. But what I'm going to do now, notice I left an uneven edge at the bottom of the barn. Uh, I left an uneven edge here. And I'm just trying to create a foliage effect on it without getting into too much detail. And uh, mainly again, remember, we're not trying to cover everything. Now, final. This is a little bit bright, so I'll just take some of my gray color and dry brush it over it slightly. Now where I got that a little bit on the dark side, you can come back in and lift up whatever you need to lift up to bring it back out again. Now that's going to pretty well conclude the uh, part on the barn. Let's just lift that up a little bit higher. And that's the finished part on the barn. We're now going to go to the next portion of our demonstration here, which will be uh, the area where the land begins to end, comes down a bank, and uh, we'll take our ultramarine blue and burn umber with our flat one half inch brush again, and we're pretty much going to use the density of the darks that we have in here, and if you look at your photograph, 
Uh, anywhere I have something like this, I'll have the darker tones like this, then I'll repeat the bluish looking tones in this, and then the bluish tones in the tree, you see? And that's how I'll keep the density in the darks and all the other things I'm trying to do, okay? And we're gonna mix that pretty strongly. And actually the first time, now let's see if we can do better than that. Boy, I thought I was gonna to have to put a bird on that one, Dave. All right. Now, let's bring this on over. Now what I'll do on a bigger area like you're working on, notice that I've got kind of a middle tone. Okay, and actually uh, might look a little, might work a little better to bring that picture in a little bit closer for the detail part of it. All right, it's gonna work a lot better. Now notice I'll bring this middle tone down and kind of end it like this. And I'm gonna clean my brush I'm going to work these grays in here. I want it to look like that bank has been eroding and this just kind of comes across like this. Mm -hmm. Now this is going to be pretty wet. So before it starts drying, I want to soften that edge. We'll come out here and we'll do it again. I'm about to run out of the picture, so this is a good place to stop. I can pick it back up again. This is this way you can see the detail a little bit better. All right, take my brush. Notice how I'm just fading that out into the brown and doing it parallel to my horizon line. A lot of people do it on a slant or whatever, and it doesn't look as good. Some of this was a little bit on the wet side, so if that happens, it's no big problem. I'll just take my brush and lift it up a little bit and just still extend it out like that. So you have a lot of flexibility playing with this when it's wet. Okay, now since it is that wet, I'll bring the rest of it over here like this. Dave, I got a fellow on Thursday night. His name's Joe Lackey. If he saw me doing something like this right now, he'd figure every excuse in the world come in and get on that videotape. That's a fact. Yeah, he does. He's, that, he's like that. I want him to hear this someday, too. Okay, and you see again, I'm just hitting this pretty roughly. And notice I'm going right to the tree. Now, as I come around here, you'll look at the picture and it'll kind of come around with the bank. Okay, and that's enough on that right now. Okay, uh, now that I've got it to this point, now I'm going to come back. And you notice how all of this has worked pretty moistly. So you may have a little trouble getting it to flow exactly like I'm doing. But the main thing is, while it's still wet, I want to come back in. And I really want to use solid pigment. A little dry brush after I get it in there for a while. So bring it a little bit more light. I'm, I know what it is. I'm catching some glare on this thing. It's not picking up too well on the screen. Let me see if I can lift that. Now you see you can even bring these edges up a little bit, but I want that to be solid. So don't be afraid to go back in and really work it. Now, this is taking a little bit more not time than normal to dry. And I don't know what the atmospheric conditions are, but if it's high humidity, that will affect your drying time. Okay, so I'll come in here like this. Okay, now some of the part over here has started drying, which is okay. The 
I see some of that. I didn't get dark enough, so I'll just. I really was having a little problem with the glare. I think I've got a little bit better angle now. And again, whenever I do that, you might want to just come up and always soften that edge a little. Okay, I believe that's pretty clear on our next section. I'll let you go ahead and do that. And after that, we'll do the trees. Then all we have is the water left, and you finish it. So it's pretty good to come from the beginning where you started uh, to doing the full watercolor in th almost three <laughs> lessons. Huh? Okay, we'll go to the next portion of our painting, which will be our tree to the right. You want to mix a lot of ultramarine blue, burn umber, mostly the ultramarine blue. We use a half inch brush. As you can see on the TV, the density is pretty great. So we'll just drag it down. Now as you drag it down, you can notice it's pretty opaque. And that's the whole idea. And I purposely allow some of the edges to be a little bit jagged. Now notice how I'm allowing for my post on the right. Now, you may have to do this a section at a time. Uh, now, what will happen, you know, depending on how wet it or dry it, it's going to be on you, but what's going to happen is you'll get sections where there'll be more brown, others where there'll be more blue. I've always found this to be pretty interesting myself. Now, that's really pretty dense. Okay, now, it's still got a little bit of a glossiness to it. So before I start doing my... Uh, final scratching and so forth on the trunk, I may want to put in some of the major branches. Now, use your number eight or a number six, number four brush, whatever you feel comfortable with. But uh, if you use a number eight, many times you can come down and do this with one stroke. If you use a smaller one, uh, you'll have to do it a little with a little bit uh, more labor as far as doing it uh, the different ways you're going to do it. But by, by that I mean just having to do it in several strokes, but you can control it a little bit better. And then we'll put our main limb in here and over here. Now, in, in this I'm watching it. All the stages of drying are kind of crucial. So I know it's about to the point that I want to come in now with my knife. I think this is showing up on the monitor, but if not, let's bring it a little bit closer in. Move the painting over like this. Now, I'll even scrape out a bigger area. I think you can see that 
detail a little bit better now. We'll even bring it in a little closer than that. Okay. Now notice how, as I lift it up, it's coming up very naturally, and very easily. But we'll just pull it like this. You see, given the different textures on here. And again, we're going to do just enough of this to create the, uh, the particular effect that we're trying to create. Now, that's almost going to do it on that limb. So we'll just come around like this. Now we'll take our brush. Notice how I'm starting, like, like in the sketch pencil, I'm starting with the thinner limb towards the edge, which is one way to do it. There's really a variety of ways to do it. Coming across like this. And then out here, you're going to continue the limb. Always remember, taper this towards the edge like that. That's the primary thing that you need to remember. Let's see if I can move this down just a little bit. I've only got a couple of minutes left on this portion of it. And that'll conclude it. Now, here we have another limb. Now, you have to experiment, and whichever limb you particularly feel confident with is the one you're going to have to use. Whatever uh, brush you feel comfortable is what I'm referring to. Okay. Now notice I'm going to come in. Now notice one thing on branches. You notice how you have a major branch, then you have a secondary group of, you have a limb, then you have branches, and we'll do it maybe on this one where you can see it a little bit more clearly. Now, there's one more smaller limb up here. Let's put it. Okay, we'll come out with a, with a branch. Notice it's a straight line tapering as it gets thinner. Then we'll put limbs on that branch. Now, they're going to be thinner, but notice how they're spaced. Then, after the we put the branches and then we put the limbs, we'll put another level like this. We'll call them twigs. And then the final part, you'll see a lot of dry brushed areas around the edges of your trees many times. If you want to go that far with it, we we'll call that twigettes. Okay, now the final thing, uh, and then we'll close this part right here. Be specific. Trees are not that easy to do. There's always jillions of little bitty branches. So get your brush uh, down to a point that uh, it's the, the, everything's relatively, uh, the water's rel and the pigment so forth is such that you can put some relatively light lines on it. And then we'll just come in and put a lot of these little small branches that kind of fill the area up and really create the interest that we're looking for. Okay, and then the final thing we'll do on this portion of it that's our, that portion of it completed. You'll notice in the background, mix, you mix a lot of pigment with the water. Keep it rather thin. You've got some distant trees. Now make it look easy because that's what I'm get paid to do. It takes a little bit more time and effort to do it. And then you mix the colors, and so forth. I just do that all the way across this background area and that will conclude this portion of our demonstration. As we go to the last section of our composition now, we want to notice the, uh, the section that we're going to be covering down here by the water. Now, if you look at your reference photo, you'll see that uh, we have the bank, which is showing up rather darkly. And then right up under it, we have the reflection of the bank and the water. Now, the way we're going to do this is in two stages, as you see on your study sheet. The first stage is going to be the uh, actual laying in a lighter wash and remember, we're just doing the bank and the reflection of the building, the light reflection, uh, not the post, whatever. And we're doing it very lightly for the first stage. 
So let's just start by taking a little bit of water and wetting this down. Now, if you get more proficient with watercolor, you could really do this in one stage, but I found so many people had a problem with it that I decided it would be a lot better to just do it in two stages. Now, what we're actually doing is we're actually doing the sky repeated like we did up above. Here's the sky section. We'll come in like this with just a very, very light wash. Okay, now while that's still wet, you see I've covered everything. We want to get a mixture of like the umber, the ultramarine blue, and this is going to be somewhat of a middle tone mixture. It's not going to be the really dark wash, but as you see on your reference piece and on the photo, it's going to be the lighter section such as we see in the barn. So let's go across here now. Every now and then, if you want to leave a few of those little white highlights, you know, people try to meticulously repeat what I do or what others do on things like that, and, and uh, you find that it's not really necessary. So here we have the first wash and the second wash. I'm going to bring this straight down now. And notice I'm going directly below the barn. You see how this lines up with this, this lines up with this. And then I'll take the side of my brush and that's the post. We'll come down like that and see it gives it a nice misty feeling. Okay, now that's the portion we want to do in this stage. And then we're going to uh, allow it to dry, re-wet it and show you how to do the final stage. Now for our second stage on the water, notice how I allowed this to completely dry. And little, this is a little known fact with many people in watercolor. After something dries and it's at a lighter stage, you can actually come back and re-wet it without uh, damaging what's under it. And a lot of reason I do this is a lot of people would come in and they would get things too darkly and uh, or it would start drying before the uh, they got through with it and so this gives you a chance to stand back and see where you are. Now, our bank reflections come this way, so we'll just go backwards like this. Now, sometimes even after we finish the second stage, it's not going to be quite dark enough. Now, as I I get over to, over to a certain point, I might want to start just putting some little waves in it like this, you see? Now this is going to be the blue and gray mixture again, probably mostly blue, just like our section up above it. Okay, now we'll come down like this. And again, continue with some of these darker sections. Now, in the process of drying, notice how you're getting the nice soft edges. In the process of drying, sometimes this may uh, start drying a little lighter. And in that case, you can just come back in and start doing a little bit more of this. And uh, I lost some of, little, some of my little white areas in here. But you can still get the general effect, I think, of the water. Okay, I didn't realize we're picking up a few reflections on that light. Okay, now this is going to uh, conclude the first and second stages on the water. Now let's go ahead and do the final conclusion on the post and uh, complete the painting. Now, in concluding the, uh, the painting, let's bring this in a little bit closer here. And uh, 
we'll move it up where it'll actually be where we want it on the screen. I want you to notice, I'll take my uh, ultramarine blue and burn umber, and I'll put my first post. Now notice how I'm going to drag that, leave a lot of interesting texture, and then I'll come back and I'll put my lighter grass area around the base of it. Now sometimes if that's not covering it up or it's not exactly like you want it, 